The holiest site for Jews is also the third holiest site for Muslims. And neither side is ready to share. Dr. Yusuf Nache is in charge of tourism at the Dome of the Rock. Here's what he had to say when I asked him about the Jewish temple. It's not uh, an, an undeniable fact. It is theos. And the political situation, the misunderstanding, the mistrust distorted all the facts. That is stupid because the Arabs themselves, they call Jerusalem the place of the temple. And the golden dome right behind me, the dome of the rock, was built in order to replace uh, Solomon's temple. Allah is a religion that was there, the worship of Allah, was there before Muhammad was even born. Remember, his name is Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim. He is Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, the servant of Allah. So how could have Muhammad introduced Allah if his father's name is the slave of Allah? You see, it's a Babylonian religion. It's a Babylonian religion. And if you look at like, like people in the, in the Bible uh, regarding the Antichrist, or regarding Gog, let's say. Gog is, a, we always ask, who is Gog? Gog is a reference to a real historical figure. His name was Gaigez, Gugu. He was from Lydia, which is Turkey. He worshipped the god Men, which is the moon god. So the establishment of the moon god was, came from the eons of time. And most Muslims don't know why the moon god is there. And the crescent moon on all the flags, the minarets, and so forth. It's all over, the symbol of the, of the crescent moon. Yes. It's one of the many Babylonian religions. Uh, it, it is totally foreign to the Bible. This is why I was astonished when I started looking at the Bible. I says, there's two different gods. One God hates Jews, one God loves Jews. One God says, hey, we should not unite the world under one language. Uh, Babylon, you know, was, you know, mm -hmm. from that moment on, God changed the language. Uh, Islam wants to unite the world under one language, under one religion, one culture, one, one entity. This is not from the Bible. The amazing thing about Daniel when I read it as a Muslim is that the whole concept of Islam is put right there in two verses. Everything, it's so amazing. He will attempt to change times and laws. Well, what is Islam? Sure, it cloaks itself on the religion. Islam cloaks itself with religion. But Islam is Sharia law. Look it up. Sharia law. Sharia law to be instituted throughout the whole world. Who's changing the laws? Who's asking to change all the laws throughout the Middle East? Who's establishing Sharia law? And what does that law say? Women have no right. Does not honor the desire of women. And honors a god of forces. A god of fortresses. Who's honoring a god hungry of war and jihad? Who's doing that these days? Is that not a religion of Antichrist? As the Quran teaches and as Islam teaches, 
you, you're, you're basically down to two options. Either Jesus is who he said he is in the Bible, or he is not. So in Islam, you are taught that John is Hellenistic, so don't quote from John. Fine. Paul corrupted the New Testament, so don't quote from Paul. Okay? I can use Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And over and over and over, Jesus claims Godhood, claims to be the Messiah, claims to be the Son of Man and the Son of God. It's the reason that they tried him. It's the reason that the religious law blas uh, called it blasphemy and that he was indicted. Even if you as a Muslim do not believe he was crucified, uh, according to the fourth, fourth surah, he was indicted. He was, he was charged with a criminal offense, a punishable offense by death, which was blasphemy. And if Jesus was claiming to be blasphemous, claiming to be God, you've only got two options. Either he was claiming to be God, and he was. Or he was claiming to God, be God, but he wasn't. The problem is that Islam says, well, Isa is a prophet. But can a man be a prophet if he claimed to be Allah? That's shirk. That's the highest sin. So you got one of two options. Either he was who he said he was, or he wasn't. If he wasn't, then Isa, Jesus, doesn't deserve your pity. It doesn't deserve your attention. doesn't deserve... There's thousands of people who claim to be God. David Koresh claims to be the Messiah. But they don't deserve your respect. They don't deserve your following. They don't deserve your words. But if Jesus claimed to be God, and he was, he deserves more than respect. Either is God, which means he deserves your heart, or he wasn't God, and he deserves nothing. Christianity rises and falls not on denomination, not on what you, when you go to church and what you wear. Christianity rises and falls on the claims of Jesus Christ. If he was indicted, why? And in, in, if he was indicted and said he was God, and he was, why would they kill him? Because he upended every religious impulse in man. Mm. It was the first time that, that God sought man. Religion is nothing but men seeking God through their various systems. Christianity is God seeking man. In, in religion, men kill in the name of their gods. Mm. In Christianity, God dies for man. Mm. The cosmic violence of the cross, the, the, the moment, the nexus moment where... On the cross, Jesus hangs between heaven and earth as if, as if not uh, worthy of either. At that moment, Jesus sheds his blood, and he sheds his blood on purpose. There is a belief that Jesus dying on the cross would have made him a failure. But if Jesus died on the cross with purpose, and he told Peter, he says, I must go to be sacrificed, then his death had purpose and meaning. And his death and uh, the purpose and meaning would be that he died for himself or he died for others. If he died for himself, then obviously he's not God and Christianity is a fraud. But if he is God, then he died for others. He's the Lamb of God, mm. the uh, Agnes Day. And if he's the Lamb of God and he dies for us, then he died for you. And, and it's, it would be racist if I said Christianity wins and everybody else loses. If, if he didn't open the doors to everyone. Mm. But Christianity is not about us versus them. Christianity is about Christ dying for you. He died so that Saddam Hussein could have been saved, so that uh, Osama bin Muhammad bin Laudan could be saved, Fazul Rahman could be saved, Mullah Omar could be saved. He died so that you could accept him in your heart. And that forgiveness doesn't mean that the sin is forgotten. It means that the sin is forgiven because Jesus' blood mm. was shed for you.